Hi, and welcome to the lecture, Ultrafiltration to Concentrate Extracellular Vesicles. I am Joel Nordin, Assistant Professor at Karolinska Institutet in Sweden. I have been in the EV field for over a decade. And today I will present the working principle of ultrafiltration and some practical tips. However, first I want to thank the organizing com committee of this mock course for the invitation to present today's topic to you. Ultrafiltration separates biomolecules based on size and can be divided into two main categories, dead-end filtration and tangential flow filtration. The recovery rate is 40 to 100%, which means 40 to 100% of the particles can be found after isolation compared to the number of particles found in a sample before the isolation. The purity of the EVs after ultrafiltration depends on the starting material and the technique used. The TFF method can furthermore be scaled to industrial levels with starting volumes of several thousand liters. And the shear stress of TFF is dependent on the method used, where hollow fiber filtration has lower shear stress compared to cassette TFF isolation. But the shear stress for an individual experiment depends on the setting and equipment used. Here you can see a schematic figure of dead-end filtration. It works by forcing the sample liquid and the molecules in the liquid through a membrane by applying a force, which commonly is pressure or G-force generated by centrifugation. The size of the molecules that can pass through the membrane is decided by the pore size of the filter used. Filters with many different pore sizes exist, and for EV isolation, 10 kD membranes all the way up to 1000 kD membranes have been used. The material left in the filter is called a retentate, which commonly contains your EVs, and the material going through the filter is called a flow-through, filtrate or permeate, and is commonly the waste material when performing EV isolation with dead-end filtration. Here is a schematic figure instead showing a TFF filtration setup. TFF commonly requires specialized equipment. And TFF filtration is also known as cross-flow filtration and is working by generating a feed stream that passes parallel to the membrane phase, which allows one portion of the sample to continuously pass through the membrane while the remainder is recirculated back to the sample reservoir. The molecules and the liquid that pass through the membrane are called a permeate and the remaining sample in the feed stream is called a retentate. The pore size of the membrane again dictates the size of the molecules that can pass through the membrane and flow to the waste chamber. The retentate is circulating back to the sample chamber and then the system recirculates the sample through the system numerous times during the concentration and each round will further concentrate the sample until a desired volume is achieved. As I previously said, Ultrafiltration separates biomolecules based on their size. Therefore, it is important you know the size of the different molecules in the biofluid you are working with to be able to choose the correct cutoff for your membrane and know which particles and molecules that may co-isolate co with your EVs. Here are some example of, uh, examples of different proteins, viruses, bacteria, lipoprotein particles, and EVs that you can encounter in different biological solutions. As can be seen from the schematic picture, many different biomolecules are in the same size range as EVs and will therefore be hard to separate by ultrafiltration. It is also important to mention that the different EV subpopulations shown are very close in size and sometimes even overlap in size. It's therefore very difficult to separate them from each other with ultrafiltration. When choosing the isolation method for EVs, it is always important to know what your sample contains and what the EVs will be used for in the end. Okay, so how good is ultrafiltration to isolate EVs? In the literatures, the numbers fluctuate and the EV recovery ranges from 40 to 100%, which means that under certain conditions, according to literature, ultrafiltration can recover all particles in a sample. EV enrichment is the ratio of EV purity before and after isolation and for ultrafiltration, there are more data for TFF, where, for example, a 300 kD filter enriched EVs 30 fold compared to proteins. When particles per microgram protein ratio have been used to assess 
the purity for ultrafiltration. Dead end filtration is worse than ultracentrifugation, and TFF is similar to ultracentrifugation. The numbers indicate that dead end filtration co isolate a lot of protein together with the vesicles, while TFF tend to isolate EVs of similar purity as ultracentrifugation. Next, uh, I will share some practical information. First, the time to isolate EVs by ultrafiltration depends on several different factors, like the starting volume, concentration factor, equipment or system used, and many, many more variables. However, generally speaking, small volumes are quick to handle by ultrafiltration, while larger volumes can take up to several hours to process. With dead-end filtration, it is relatively easy to run several samples in parallel, while for TFF, this commonly requires several systems. With both dead-end filtration and TFF filtration, a buffer exchange is possible. However, DF filtration is commonly only possible with TFF filtration. DF filtration is a process where the buffer is continuously added to the sample at the same speed as the TFF concentrates the sample, which means the volume during DF filtration is maintained but molecules below the cutoff of the membrane are removed. TFF can furthermore handle volumes over thousands of liters per run, while dead-end filtration is harder to scale. To achieve a higher purity, ultrafiltration can be combined with downstream isolation procedures, such as bind dilute size exclusion chromatography and ultracentrifugation based techniques. Similar to all techniques, some quality controls are needed. I have listed some quality controls that can be performed when running ultrafiltration isolation of EVs. These suggestions can be, of course, further developed. However, I would always recommend running some quality controls for all your EV purifications. For ultrafiltration, I suggest quantifying the recovery and purity after the isolation of EVs as basic controls. And depending on the experiment, it can also be good to evaluate the functionality of the isolated EVs. Thus, for all techni techniques performed in the lab, it is advisable to evaluate the repeatability of technical replicates. So, when writing a manuscript, it can be sometimes be hard to know what to include in the methods section. Here I have listed the minimal requirements when you are, desc when you are describing your ultrafiltration isolation method. If all these variables are reported, it will be possible to replicate the experiment and different studies can furthermore be compared. So please include uh, the listed variables the next time you write the manuscripts. Next, I will go through some do's, do's and don'ts for ultrafiltration. For dead-end filtration, I recommend using a swing-out rotor, since then the g-force generated against the filter will always be in the right direction. Uh, if a fixed angle rotor is used, the applied g-force can be directed in the wrong plane and affect the performance of the filtration. Avoiding a very high protein or viscous sample is recommended. This will rapidly clog the filter and lead to cake formation. Cake formation is when accumulated particles or macromolecules form a layer on the membrane surface, which leads to a significant decrease in performance. I would always also recommend perform a DF filtration step before the concentration step, if this is possible to perform with the equipment you have. If a better purity is required, I'd, I advise using the possibility to combine ultrafiltration with other downstream EVA isolation techniques, such as size exclusion chromatography. So future developments in the field that I hope uh, will come soon is more EV-specific membrane with pore sizes designed for EV isolations and increased surface areas of the membranes to be able to run larger volumes faster. So on this slide, I have listed the references that were shown in the presentation. And here are some definitions listed that I have already gone through during the presentation. Thank you for your attention. This lecture is part of the ISEV organized mock course regarding detection and isolation of intact EVs. You can find other lectures on the ISEV webpage listed here. And again, thank you for listening. <laughs>